Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show some code examples of how to use the SBI library in uh, Python. And I'm using, well, I'm using Google Collab, but uh, this can also work on Jupyter Notebook or also on regular um, Python IDE. Um, first thing first, there's, there are official tutorials. Yeah, you should definitely check them out. They give a simple introduction to how to use the library and all the functions um, that they have. I won't run this notebook because uh, running it will take some time, but I will go through it and I'll explain it. So um, in order to use it, I'm fixing uh, Pyro PPL, which is a library that SBI uses to 1.8.0. Uh, and this is because Google Collab comes with PyTorch 1.10, but uh, the Pyro PPL uh, newest version demands 1.11, and I don't want to download uh, a new PyTorch. It's usually quite big, around 700 or 800 megabytes. So if I do this, it makes sure that uh, it won't download a PyTorch. And then I installed a SBI library, but I'm installing it through GitHub because um, there might be some updates and bug fixes. And so it's better usually to download the, it from GitHub. Loading libraries. And now uh, I will go over um, this two moons toy example. Okay, so the way this is set up is that we have these um, two parameters, but they are not our parameters. They are internal to the simulator. And uh, A is uniform from minus half pi to half pi. R is normal with a mean 0 0.1 and a standard deviation of 0 0.01. And then it generates a point where R is the radius and A is the angle. So basically, you get points that are more or less 0 0.1 away from the origin and that are, that are in a half circle uh, around uh, the mean. And it's not exactly around the mean, you add this 0 0.25 to it, okay? And so this creates a P, and then our parameters, the parameters that we are interested in, they are just defining this point over here, this point in 2D space, and you just add it to the P and you get your uh, simulated X. So this is the model. And here I set it up, I define these hyperparameters, the prior over the thetas, are uniform, so it's a box uniform uh, from minus one to one on both uh, theta one and theta two. I defined a simulator, and what I define here is just doing this, okay? So the simulator just takes the thetas and it simulates the x using these equations, okay? And we can see that, for example, if I give it the same theta, so if I give it let's say a theta that are zero, zero. So I, I'm not translating the point, uh, I'm not translating the P anywhere. And I just do it for a thousand points. The internal noise from the simulator, the, the A and the R, yes, they create this half circle, yeah? And now since the simulator relates in a very simple way to the parameters, we can simply invert the equations and that way get a posterior. So for example, suppose that X observed was zero, zero, and I know that this identity holds, then I can now just sample a lot of samples from the internal noise of this simulator, yeah, sample a lot of Ps, invert this equation and get uh, my thetas, yeah, get my posterior theta. So given that this is uh, the X observed, I can invert it and get a sample from the thetas. So the way to do this is simply to invert this equation. I won't go over it in detail, but I will pause for a second so you can look at the equations maybe. Okay, and in this code, I simply um, implement it, yeah? And I think this is copied or almost copied from uh, the paper that presented this problem. Okay, and then I can generate the true posterior and um, if I plot the true posterior, so given that I observed X to be zero, zero, we see that we have actually two moon-shaped uh, um, mass of points. Yeah, and this is because the, this relation over here, it has this um, absolute value. It's not only that this theta can generate 
um, that X also this data can generate that X and it creates this uh, two modal distribution, two crescent shape distribution, which looks quite impressive. And we can also maybe do a 2D KDE plot of it. The SBI library comes with this pair plot uh, graphing, which allows you to plot this is sort of um, histograms on the marginals and then maybe a 2D histogram uh, on the off diagonal. What I want to use is I want to use the KDE plot on the diagonal, okay? And I want to just scatter the points on the off diagonal. So I just created this code here in the diagonal. I do a KDE plot and in the upper diagonal, I just scatter the points in the lower diagonal, I do nothing. Okay, and now we can run SBI. So for example, let's uh, run it with 2000 points. The way to do it is I sample from the prior. Um, I run it to the simulator and here I'm doing, for example, uh, NPE, neural posterior estimator, not sequentially. Uh, I still call the SNPE, okay? Cause this is how the object is called uh, in the SBI library. I give it the prior and I mention which density estimator I want to use. I think the default is math, uh, but here I just, just decided to use NSF. You can also use MDN. Uh, I think these are the three that are currently implemented in the library. Then I call inference and I append the simulations. So I append the thetas and the X simulated that they created and I call train on it. So it will train the neural network. It will train this neural density estimator, this NSF, uh, over this data. And you can see that it trained it in this case for 106 epochs until it finishes. And then I called build posterior and I won't go over why this is necessary. Uh, suppose that the true X that I observed was zero, zero. I just called the posterior and I asked it to sample and I give it the actual uh, X that I observed, right? So in NPE, the posterior is amortized. What it means is that we found the structure, give us any X and we'll give you a posterior. Um, so uh, I give it the X that I actually observed and this is my true posterior. And now I can plot it and you can see it looks quite good, I have to say. Uh, when we do SNP, when we do it sequentially, um, I can just define how many times I want to do it. In this case, I define that I want to do it two times. Uh, instead of using a prior, I call it a proposal. So the proposal in the first round will be the prior. In the second round, it will be the posterior of the first round. So I do exactly the same. I sample from the proposal. I simulate uh, through the simulator. I train the neural network, the neural density estimator. In SNPE, uh, the new syntax is that you also have to give it the proposal. Maybe it will change in the future. I don't know. I called build posterior, and here I'm setting the default to be X observed. So here I'm, it's not amorticized because I'm all the time zoning in on my true X observed. So this is why I want to do it sequentially. It's that I don't just try to look for the general structure. I'm looking for the structure and the locality of the X observed that I actually have. Okay, and this is run in a loop. And in this case, only after two times it will stop. So you can see trained for 154 epochs the first round, and then for 23 epochs the second round. And then again, I can sample from this posterior and get uh, this graph over here. Um, it does have this outlier. Maybe I should have limited the graph to the limits of the true posterior and the, this graph wouldn't be so smooshed. But if I look just on the marginals, I can see that there was some improvements. Yeah, so for example, here, it's a bigger gap yeah, from the um, true posterior in blue and the SBI posterior in orange. So you can see here, it's a bit closer, at least marginally. And I can also use NRE or NLE. The only thing I have to change is this thing over here. So instead of SNPE, I will call SNRE and I will give it a classifier. I can here give the classifier actually don't remember what the default classifier that they use, but it's some neural network. I call, I do the exact same syntax again. I append the simulation, I call train, I call build posterior, I give it 
I sampled from the X observed, but now notice that the sampling, look, it's, it's not just sampling directly from the posterior because SNRE just gives you a likelihood ratio. So you still have to do MCMC, for example, to get um, the sample from the posterior. So this is exactly what's happening here. It does MCMC, it tunes the bracket width, it uh, does some burn-in, and then it samples the 2000 samples that I want. But you can see at least in this uh, example that the results are not so good actually. Um, and I tried also to increase the number of chains. Uh, you can also do that, but it didn't help. So I don't know, maybe SNRE is not so good on this problem or maybe I did something wrong. Um, yeah, but this is all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.